Haley, owner of Arrowhead Bulldogs, and today we're going to be talking about our pet brooder ICU incubator. for joining us today as we talk about the pet breeder ICU. Now as a bulldog breeder, this is one of um, the most important things that I use to help keep my puppies happy and healthy. Bulldogs are a flat-faced breed, so they always run the risk, as newborns especially, of aspirational pneumonia. Um, they also can't regulate their own body temperature. So by having the pet brooder ICU, it allows me to give them the oxygen or albuterol as needed and it has a temperature setting control so that I can keep them warm so that they continue to thrive. So they will be in the pet brooder for about two to three weeks. It depends on the size of the litter. Right now we have six babies in here. So as you might be able to see here in a bit, they're starting to get a little bit big. So here shortly they will go ahead and head over to their mommy. Um, but I will leave this up just because things happen and let's say they're playing and they get their face on a water bowl and they sound girly, then I still have the ability to pop them in here, um, give them a breathing treatment and help dry up anything that might be in their lungs or in their airway. Um, so this is something that I will keep out until puppies go home. So what's really awesome about this is it allows me to control so many factors. As you can see over here, we have temperature, we have humidity, we have anons, a dimmer, so a light on the inside. Right now we have the light on continuously because we have a live puppy cam going, but it allows me to turn it up and turn it down. And it's easy to work, it's easy to set. You just push a couple buttons, change the temperature up and down as you need. Um, the only thing that it does not do, something to keep in mind if you have one, is once the temperature is reached, it will stop warming up, but it will not cool down. So if you have, if your puppies are too warm, uh, they're usually pretty good at letting you know. What I have to do is I'll just crack it a little bit, just slide it up real easy, and then I sit here and make sure that I monitor it so that no puppies fall out. But it allows the temperature to come down a little bit so that the temperature that I need it to be at is reached without being too hot. Now as you can see, it does have the humidity. It has a little port in the back here, and it came with a hose. This came with it, um, but they specifically suggest to use distilled water. So what we did was we just put a little hole in the top and just slide it down in there. One jug will last me easily a whole litter. So you set the humidity, and on the inside here, I'll open it again. You can see on the far side, there is a little float ball system back there. So whatever the temperature is that you need it, whatever the humidity is that you need, um, it'll regulate it for you. So as you can see, as the, as the float ball will sink, it'll then suck up more of the water as needed. It also has filters on both sides, which the manufacturer suggests that you wash weekly. But this way you can kind of see what it's like. So we have the little door here that slides up and down. It's kind of scratched up and beat up, but it's been well used and greatly loved. Um, I've put puppies as big as four months in here. One had a sinus infection. It was super easy just to pop them in there um, by the vet's directions and give them a breathing treatment, which really helped him recover. It also has this great little tray here. I'm not going to slide it out because I have puppies in there, but it's a rather deep tray. So right now, I have multiple blankets, and underneath, I'll just show you real quick again. Underneath here, I tie up puppy pads in knots and fill up the bottom of the tray, and then I put blankets over top of it. These puppy pads and knots allow them to not continuously lay on their chest so they don't get a flat chest syndrome. And it also allows them to exercise their legs and helps them to grow and walk properly. So I fill these up. You can also use tennis balls or rolled up socks. Those are all great methods. 
tennis balls can get expensive. They're harder to wash. Socks I just find annoying, but these here, each litter, I tie them up as I need, and then when they get poopy and gross, I can just throw them away. It's so much easier. So I'll put this back in here. Here you go. So I layer it in there. And then of course you want to make sure that the puppies are on clean, clean bedding as much as possible. Um, you can actually order uh, washable puppy pads to put in the bottom of it. I find it easier to use disposable and then just get really cute blankets. So as I said, this pulls out, um, which makes it easy to clean. And then on the other side here, we have the nebulizer or oxygen intake port. It did not come with the hose. It did just come with this one piece right here. You can easily pop it out and put a cap in it to help keep it clean when it's not in use. But typically, it just slides right down in there. These here are actual, actual nebulizer hoses. I bought a pack off of Amazon. I found that this was the easiest thing to do. Um, it comes with the whole little setup right here. And typically, I just have the oxygen running through it, and then as needed, I can simply twist this off, put the albuterol inside, and then put it back on, and it'll evenly disperse it into the incubator as needed. Um, I like having multiple hoses of these, because as puppies are bigger, as I said, I have like a four month old in here, and when they're out playing, their little sharp teeth can easily go through the hose, so I like to keep extras on hand um, because the oxygen is important to me to make sure that they get it and I don't want any holes in it. So, like I said, the nebulizer oxygen hose runs all the way over to our oxygen concentrator, which is not on because it's loud at the moment, um, but you just flip the switch, attach the hose to the little out port, and it gives you um, how many liters per minute. Um, the company that we purchased this, purchased this from suggests to leave it on three. Um, it depends, for me, it depends on what is going on. Sometimes I'll turn it up to four or five if the puppy is really struggling. But then as they get older, I will decrease the amount as they are spending more time out with mom and less time in the incubator. But it does make a bit of an obnoxious sound when you turn it on. This is a refurbished one and is much more um, economical to buy a refurbished one than it is to buy a brand to make a new one. But it has the little lights and the whistles. There's stands that you can replace on it. But overall, it's a really easy and simple setup. Something that I, as a breeder, do not plan on ever going without. Um, and I love it. So feel free to ask any questions down below. Um, leave any comments. I'm always welcome to feedback and I love answering questions about my dogs. So thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you guys later.